Hi, I'm Peggy with Headshots by Peggy, and today we have Eileen Gruber with us, and we are gonna have so much fun. So Eileen is an actor, a writer, a producer, an advocate, a da da da. I mean, the list da, keeps da, going, da. right? Yeah, everything in the entertainment industry, I have done it. You I've have done it all. Done it all. <laughs> yeah. So we just finished doing headshots. Yes. So that was really fun. I've never done headshots fun. and then made my client come up and do a vlog with me before. Ah. So. so <laughs> Trick. Um, <laughs> no, that um, was the plan. That was right? The plan. It was the plan. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't rope her into this. She knew she was going to come on my vlog. Um, but it was really fun, and you are really easy to photograph. Oh, um, thank you. You know, a lot of actors get nervous in front of the camera mm -hmm. because on set you're not staring at the, you know, at the camera. You have other people interacting with. Yeah. But in my studio, it's you, me, and a lens, and the lens can get a little bit overwhelming sometimes, you know. Um, yeah, but this was fun. Um, it was easier than most headshot sessions are, to be honest with you. You're just easy to talk to, and that makes it very... I think the more relaxed you are, the better headshots you get, and the better chance you're going to have your real personality come out on camera. Absolutely. I, I believe that. That's why I try to make people, like, you know, have a silly... You know, like I said, a few times I sabotage myself because I get you really serious, and then I say and something you, silly. She makes you laugh, right, when you're in these serious headshot mode. I, I made her cry, though, too, so... She did. <laughs> but, uh... But, but no, I, you know, it is intimidating, but it's so important because it's those little macro expressions that right. come across when you're yeah. right in the lens. So, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to, uh, to, pull, to take them off the camera and look at them because I know you did a great job. Thank you. So did you. It was easy. It was well, easy. Good. good. So talk to me about, you've been an actor, an amazing actor for, for a couple of years. I'm going on my 27th year in the industry. Because you started when you were like three. Three years old. Yeah. yeah. So, me too. I started doing photography at three. <laughs> um. <laughs> I've been around a while, yeah. I started in Atlanta and then moved to New York after I outgrew Atlanta. And then I was in New York a couple of years and moved to L.A. And I've been here a long time now. So... Acting in Atlanta, acting in LA, I mean, and in New York and in LA, what, what are the major differences? Well, um, and I know it's changing. I know it's Atlanta's changed a getting, lot. You there know, were only two casting directors in Atlanta when oh, I wow. started working there. So if you piss off a casting director, it <laughs> is over. I worked for one of them. So, you know, but there wasn't a whole lot going on. So we would travel all around the different areas and you know, the Finn Cannons were still casting back then, and um, they've been at it a long time, and I remember traveling to the Carolinas to audition for them way back when I was in my 20s, and then what's really fun is just a couple of years ago, I put something on tape and sent it to the South to the Finn Cannons again, and yeah. ended up with a really, really nice recurring role on something, which took me back to Atlanta, which... I love. Which I was going to say, now with yeah. self-tapes, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. there's a lot of people, um, a, a lot of my clients come in and do self-tapes here, mm -hmm. if, you know, and it's always, hey, I have a self-tape due in two hours, can <laughs> I come, you know, yeah. um, and if it works out, then I'm, I'm always happy to do that, that is one mm -hmm. of the services I offer, but it's, it's really fun, because... Yeah. You know, you can be in L.A. and audition in New York or, you yeah. know, in Atlanta. Yeah. It's different now. And it, uh, it really was a, a great opportunity for me when self-typing started coming because you get to sort of control your environment and send the tape that you want. And, um, you know, one of the things that has been a challenge in my career through the years is that I have a limp. Mm -hmm. or rebuilt leg of a spinal cord injury and uh, that was often an issue when I would come into rooms and uh, self-taping was really great because nobody got to see that and I got to book jobs and then just show up on set and I'm already hired and <laughs> now go. they got to deal with it <laughs> there you go and it's never a problem really on a it's set it just isn't I'm so active and agile and all that stuff I'm it's you know been just part of my life all you know all my life so uh you know self-tapes were a great way for me to build you know more credits and uh -huh. yeah 
get yeah. the, get in the door and, yeah. and audition. Yeah, and so, you know, after this many years and as hard as I've worked, you know, finally the resume is getting to the point where the limp matters less and I can hide it better. Yeah? Yeah, because it's been rebuilt. <laughs> I just had it rebuilt two more times and now I don't have to wear a brace, so now it's even easier to hide yeah. the movement, yeah, so. So, um, and, and another thing we were laughing about is that you uh, you play a lot of uh, crack whores. Well, and, that and came with the leg, really. Um, you're like, hey, I'm going to just embrace this and yeah. do, what I, do what yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. I had a manager many, many years ago named Lynn Bickelman, and she said, uh, I just want to, I want you to go with me on this one. Let's um, mess you all up in some of your headshots and give you this crackhead trailer trash look. And actually doing that was a brilliant idea at the time because at that time in LA, um, people were not open or accepting of a woman with a flaw. And oh, because that's was, changed a lot. It's now. changed a lot now, which but is back scary. Then was which a is huge scary issue. because it's still an issue. But the fact that it's, it's changed a lot. So we started doing crackhead roles and stuff like that. And yeah. then I started to get auditions because that they could justify that. And um, which is funny because mine, you know, you can hide it or you can show it. It's it's really not something that people need to stress about as much as they have through the years because most of film and television is here yeah. and we don't really uh, have time to watch people walk into a room and still you can hide it if you want to. So, But anyway, w with those characters, it was like, use it, use it, use it. And yeah. actually... Um, I still remember every single producer who was cool about it. I remember every casting director who was cool about it. And I remember every job where they were like, yay, instead of um, yeah. how do we hide it. And, uh, and I will never forget all the people who let me just be who I am. And those were some of my best roles. So thank you to all of you, the producers of Hung, the producers of Game of Silence, the producers from Sons of Anarchy. So many of them through the years, Bones, um, Criminal Minds, you know, the guys that Brad Falchuk and um, Ryan Murphy have hired me twice now, and I, I am grateful to all of them for being cool about it. And now our industry is shifting and changing, and we're becoming more inclusive and all-inclusive, and, and I've been an advocate for that for many years now. Yeah. And we're finally seeing the industry open up to all differences, which is, I think, really critical because there are a lot of really talented actors that need to be brought into the game who have a lot of depth and a lot of stuff to bring right. to the table. Well, I think what the industry needs to realize is a person with a disability or a handicap um, is still a person. Like, oh, they yeah. still get up every morning, they brush their teeth, they get dressed, they yeah. go to the store, they have families, they have friends, they have, yeah. they do stuff. So, you and know. And they, they have, um, okay, I'm just going to line it up because here's how I see it. <laughs> <laughs> There's easy life, and that's here, and yeah. that's where everybody's perfect, and nothing's ever right. wrong in their world, and nothing's ever wrong with their body or their life, and that's here. But people with disabilities have had extreme highs and extreme lows. So their work, in my opinion, can be much more riveting and um, engaging because they have darker darks to draw from and higher highs. And, you know, once you've, you know, faced your life a few times or had your body chopped up or lost a limb, um, you don't see life the same way. And a lot of the people that I know who are trained actors and they're ready and they're at the gate you know we sit around and goof off and they have the best humor because they have to to survive their lives they've yeah. had to have enormous amounts of humor and they are just really bright strong strong human beings and um it's a shame we've missed out on that because the industry wants to always take a, a character with a disability and put a star in that role so that that star can like win an Oscar. And the thing is, um, then the role is not accurately portrayed and then society. If, yeah. So often society, if, if you, if you haven't had, um, a, a major disability in your life, you actually want to look at it like, 
oh my God, how would I survive that? And oh, my pity goes out to you. And all, all this like, oh, I could never live if I had to deal with that. And then you end up with these pathetic portrayals that are very um, minimizing and, and people, characters that want to kill themselves and all that stuff. And the reality is, is that you've had, if you've had those kind of things, right. like I've faced my life enough times, you could see me on my darkest hour laughing at the dumbest things <laughs> in the world. And um, I literally have had people say to me, um, you handle cancer the way most handle a broken nail or a car accident. And, and I've had doctors say to me, uh, you're the only one who's ever woken up from cancer surgery and smiled at us. <laughs> um, but that's what happens when you've fought for yeah. your life for all your life and it's a different perspective so if you brought me in to play um a cancer patient or a person with a spinal cord injury you're gonna get a completely different point of view yeah than somebody who's thinking how horrible it must be how about somebody who's been there been through it it's just a different portrayal right and I think our, our world has missed accurate portrayals and, and, and that's been a disservice to all people because I think that you wouldn't be as afraid of life's challenges if you saw some of the warriors that I know and how they handle those challenges. And then you'd actually be looking at it going, wow, okay, there's some true strength there and some true grit and, um, and that's engaging and fascinating. Well, and a good actor is honest. They pull from, you know, what they have. Mm -hmm. And when you have this much, that's great. But when you have this much, you know, you have... It's the yeah. same as being a singer. I remember when I first left Atlanta and I was a singer. Uh -huh. I used to do musicals all the time in Atlanta. And um, I was in the church choir and I was always the one they gave the hard pieces to because I could hit the high notes and... I thought I was good. And then I went to New York City and I trained with the people who train the Broadway singers. Yeah. And here's my range right there. Before New York. And, and then. then <laughs> and I was fascinated. I remember saying to um, Phyllis Grandy, who was one of my teachers at HB in New York, she, HB Studios in New York, and she would hand me these songs. And I'm like, I can't sing that. And she's like, Yes, you can. And then she'd show me how. And, um, it's like that, you know, when, yeah. when same as music and same with life. And, you know, I read this years and years ago. I wish I could remember who said it, but they said actors really get good in like their fifties because that's when they've had a lot of life experience. Uh huh. Well, guess what? My life experience started, started, in... started at five years old. Right. So I have a lot of yeah. life experience to pull from like a lot. I yeah. mean, so much that if I even told you all the things that I've been through, it's if I didn't have the scars to prove it, <laughs> you wouldn't believe it because I'm still the one running around doing 500 things at a right. time, and and I'm and I'm not um, bragging about that. It's just the reality is uh, when you've had to adapt and adjust and overcome all your life, you get really good at it. You get and, really good at yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, and, I can get up in the, the morning. And the things that people think are a big deal are just not a big deal. They're just not. They're just not. And, I mean, there have been times, I remember um, not too long ago where I flew across the country on crutches, with crutches, to go speak at an event. And um, I could get off the crutches a little bit, but I could only go across a room once and then my leg would start giving out. And this was because I just had another major rebuild. And I, so I'm at this event and I'm, I'm speaking at it and I get a message from my agent that I have a really big audition um, the next day at five o'clock in LA. And I'm now in Boston. And I'm like, <sighs> so that means switch flight, get on a 5 a.m. flight out of Boston, right? switch planes, get into LA. So I was getting into LA just with enough time to get home from the airport, shower, and, and get, to the, get to the audition. So I, so I'm, I'm exhausted. I, I land in LA. I'm, I've got to get a wheelchair because I'm with crutches and all this to get. Just to give you one example of one day and what happens when somebody's coming into auditions, you know. So I get home to my apartment and the water's off. 
So now I can't even take that shower I wanted. So I take the water jug uh, that is filtering water and I put my head over the sink and I wash my hair with like whatever water's in the jug. And I'm like, it's gonna have to do. Splash some water on my face. It's all the water I'd left. We're done here. Um, quickly get ready, race across to one of the big studio lots. Then I get to the studio lot and the security guards won't let you drive on. Oh. Right? So I've got crutches in the trunk, but I can't go in to the audition on crutches or I'm never going to get that job. So I'm like, can you guys please let me drive on? They wouldn't. Can you call me a car? They wouldn't. So uh -huh. I had to park my car. Now I'm running low on time because of all the chaos. I had to park my car, get out my crutches, crutch all the way across the lot. Now I'm all sweaty, get in there, hide the crutches, clean up the sweat, try to look like a normal person, and then go into the audition. Hi. <laughs> so. Did you book it? I, I did not book that job. <laughs> I did not book that job. But there have been ones I've booked where you yeah. wouldn't believe, you wouldn't believe. I have booked things, like I have self-taped uh -huh. literally hours after coming out of the anesthesia with friends in Houston, putting up the, every lamp they have in their house to try to light my yeah. little situation and send in the tape. So, I mean, when you've had to deal with these kind of extreme situations, yeah. you're just a different human being. You are. You're you just, are. it's not the same as, oh no, I got to worry about my makeup in the morning. It's just a whole different thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> I have, uh, I have lymphedema and, and eight years ago I was given two weeks to live because of some complications. Oh, wow. I ended up with C. diff and, you know, I was having oh, a lot no. of it. It's a long oh. story, but I, um, ran into a holistic doctor and, and, and got my health back, you know, to where mm -hmm. I am now. And I maintain um, my condition by eating raw vegan and eating very oh, clean I and, <laughs> and, and that's the, one of the craziest things that I hear from people all the time is, Oh, I could never do that. I could never give up cheese. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, or walk could. across the room. Like it's not yeah. even, it's not yeah. even an issue. It's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I have to do the whole vegan thing too, because of the, yeah, the toxins in the, my body. And, yeah, yeah. It's just, you you, you know, high you alkaline, your yeah. high alkaline body is yeah. a healthier body. And, and guess yeah. what? And, and it cracks me up, you know, in my mind, I'm like, you know, I used to spend four plus hours a day taking care of myself just so I could walk. I, and I now, understand that. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's so it's, it, and so, you know, uh, there's certain things that people don't understand. And then I hear people say, well, we can't hire somebody with a disability because it'll be too much on them. And I'm thinking they got yeah, here for no the audition. Idea. Yeah. <laughs> like I, this is or nothing. They're, they're not going to be able to handle that day. And I'm like, I got news for you. I will be the one that will shoot for 48 hours straight. If and you not me too. Right. Because you can because never you're complain. Not be, you're the one that's like, I, yeah. okay. Because yeah. you know what it feels yeah. like, you know, I, I have chronic pain. So do I hurt? Yeah. Sure. Yep. If I, Great if I, for the work. if mm. I didn't hurt, I mean, I, you know, and there's people that, you know, oh, I, I bumped my hand. I can't work. And yeah. I'm like, really? Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I remember, you know, it's a, it's a different, it's a different mentality. And, and what the industry yeah. needs to realize is, you know, that is, that's the people that are going to give you, you know, they're all, those are the people that know how to overcome because, yeah. you know, it's just like the smart kid. I remember I, I had a hard time in school, you know, and, um, out of school, you know, it, life was fine, but all the smart kids are the ones that aren't doing anything with their life now because they never had a challenge. And the first time they had a challenge, they didn't yeah. know how to deal with it. Right. And, you know, I yeah. think, you know, people that have had challenges, they know how to deal with things. They know how to just make things work. It doesn't well, have to be is, perfect. You just you exactly. figure it out. Well, this you is why I, I mean, I speak, um, nationally and even sometimes outside of this country, um, about the inclusion of people with disabilities. Here's our little all in hashtag all in, um, pin. Um, but this is one of the things I'm constantly trying to say when I'm speaking is like the reason that we need to include people who have challenges and disabilities in the, in the conversation, in the diversity discussion, in our work, in our shows, um, in all work is because until you have the full picture, mm -hmm. 
none of it works. So what you were just saying is, is like there's so many kids who haven't been through anything and they want to like, I'm not going to say all the things they've been doing lately because I think it's really, it, it really makes me sad that so many kids are turning to, you know, trying to end their lives and stuff because somebody broke their heart or something didn't right. work out their way. And it's like, you know what? Try being a kid with a disability. Somebody's breaking your heart every day, yeah. you know, everywhere you go. And you're not being allowed to play in the same games as everybody else. And you're, you know, the challenges these kids actually go through. And I think that when the world starts to see these people more often, and starts to see the reality of what a challenge really looks like, you're not only gonna learn a lot from them, but you're also gonna realize that um, there are real challenges and then there are made up challenges. And I think it's really important for society to know the difference. And I think the only way you're gonna know the difference between a real challenge and a made up drama in your head is by seeing more of the truth on screen. Well, Does that make sense? What I'm absolutely saying? makes sense, and it's not just with with people with a disability. It's um, every Everything. minority, everything that's different, because yeah. I, I, there are people that are bigots, there are racists, there yeah. are yeah. there are yeah. evil people out there. But the majority of people, mm -hmm. I feel, fall into the ignorant category. Right? They just don't know. They just don't and know, and that's why we have to and tell every they story. They see on TV yeah. what they see on TV, so mm -hmm. they assume. And so they react based on that. I grew up in a very, very small community, 900 people, 36 wow. of my graduating class from high school. Did you say Missouri? I, I had Kansas, yeah. Northern Kansas, Kansas. Okay. yeah. Um, and so pretty much everybody in my town was white German. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that was like, I'm not full German. And so I was like picked on about it. Like it was For that, it was German. literally that sound, white my wow. town was. We discriminate against what, how, which how white, white you are, are, which white you are. Um, so, um, but, but, so there was a lot of things I just didn't know. I yeah. mean, I'd never seen a gay yeah. couple. I'd mm -hmm. never seen, like, I mean, you know, and, and when I left high school and I, you know, moved, I was, it was like, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And I remember the first time, you know, meeting different people thinking, Oh, well, that's weird. I thought they would be, you know, and, and you get that realization that they're just humans. They're just humans. And the thing is, like, I always see life as like this massive, like, um, painting or mural. And, you know, a painting or a mural is interesting with like the three primary colors and then black and white. Cause that's yeah. like, you know dark and light um, but then if you mix the colors together and you get the full palette of all the possibilities of colors it gets even more interesting and then blend in the black and the white and all the colors and then you get all these shades of different colors and if you removed anything based on red right. what have you got and if you removed any color based on blue what have you got right. uh, you know you can't you can't remove a segment of the population and still have the full, the picture, full picture of life you know, and, and so there are people, everybody has a place, everyone matters, everyone's life experience is different. And every, every, um, human being has something to bring to the table. And I think that if we stopped looking at this illusion of perfection that we think we all want to have or be or aspire to be and realize that whatever we are, uh huh is exactly what we're supposed to be exactly. and the only person we should ever be uh comparing ourselves to is ourselves you mm -hmm. know ourself five years ago ourself yesterday and the only person we should be competing against is that person we were yesterday and racing you know or challenging the the person who we're going to be tomorrow it, does that make sense so we're, we're we're the best i'm the best me i can be I mean, Today. you can't be yeah. me, right. and I can't be you. Exactly. We're both blonde. We both have yeah. light eyes, but I we'll can't be you. <laughs> I can't be you. Yeah. You can't be exactly. me. I can't do what you do. And you we're can't. not in competition with exactly. each other. Your life experience is completely different than mine. 
and we all see some, no two humans are the same. They're and just and you just said a word that is one of my other soapboxes. So you, you, I'm sorry you said it. Um, when I moved to LA, everybody was like, oh my God, you're going to have so much competition. And I was like, really? There's 4 million yeah. people in, yeah. in LA. And yeah. the kind of photography that I do is not the kind of photography they do. My personality is not the same as them. Exactly. The way you act and somebody else, you're not in competition. No. And We're when not. you help each other, this whole competition yeah. thing is so immature. We all have to be helping <laughs> like each other. Like, grow up. Yeah. And exactly. Are we in kindergarten? Grow up. I mean, and like, the more we help each other, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. the more, you know, Merrick yeah. was just down. We did a self-tape for one of his really good friends, and they auditioned for the same parts. Yeah. And and yeah. we did the best self-tape, and so, you know what I mean? You know, that's what you I do. I think people succeed in groups. And I think, um, like you and I were talking yeah. about it earlier, it's like if we see a chance to help someone who doesn't have what we have or doesn't have the... Like, for example, she, Wonder Woman, um, just came to one of our events that we did <laughs> completely free to everyone. And it was for helping performers with disabilities. Mm -hmm. It was a really good meeting. It in our industry. Good, yeah. It was a good meeting. Because um, one of the actors, Paul Ford, um, has become very aware of the fact that, you know, be becoming an actor is very, very expensive. And, you know, you need headshots, you need to pay for all the websites, IMDB and Actors Access, and everybody wants your money and you're not making any money. It takes years to make money for the average actor and even the working actors uh, often are struggling. I think it's less than 1% of members of the Screen Actors Guild even make their insurance every year. So, like, performers with disabilities have so much less opportunity. So, Peggy graciously came out and did headshots for every performer who showed up that day, which I thank you for that because so stunning. many of them cannot afford to get I made them headshots. listen to me for over an hour you first, did though, though. You, you gave them a good school <laughs> everything we're doing at these events is to help educate empower elevate the performers with disabilities community and get them working we called it um, time to start booking PWD performer with disability um, in Hollywood so um, she did that and I'm helping with training and giving them experience from my 27 years in the industry and the next event we're going to do is going to be um, working on their audition skills and a few of the very generous and wonderful casting directors from the Casting Society of America said they were going to come out and help with the audition skills set because on average a performer with a disability gets two auditions a year. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm with you on that, that it's important for us to help each other because it's like, you know, even our speaker last time, Cornell Thomas, talked about how when he was a kid and he really, really wanted to be a basketball player, but he didn't know how. And some guy was watching him on the courts and just came up and said, hey, man, you want me to teach you how to shoot a basketball? And that changed his life. And he didn't charge him for it. He wouldn't have been able to afford it, you know, so... I think it's critical in life that we help wherever we can and that doesn't mean give away all our skill sets for free for the rest of our lives because I've done enough years No, and there, that, that's, that's but, a catch-22 because yeah. sometimes there are those people out there. See, I'm the type of person that if somebody helps me, I'm so appreciative me and too. I'm like, oh my God, what can, can I, I do? Like, <laughs> yeah. um, but, but yeah. you know, and I've seen this with me because, um, because I, I love to work. I love to take headshots. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I love it. it. I would do it, it if I, you know, you know, either way. Like, I'm, I'm passionate about it. It's what mm -hmm. I love. And, um, but what I've noticed is sometimes I see somebody and I'm like, you know, they're just really struggling. And, you know, let me just help them out. I'll just give them a couple looks, you know. And they come in. Um, they're not ready. They're not prepared. They don't, and, and the headshots turn out horrible because they they're aren't invested. Yeah. And so it's a catch-22. I mean, yes, you want to make things available, but you also need to teach people that, you know, because, you know, it's just, it's tight for everyone. And if you want it, it you will figure your, it out. Yeah. And your time is valuable, too. But, and, but you also, yeah. I think that as we start helping each other, like, you know, 
you know, I, I'll, I'll read for people when I'm doing a self-tape form, but I'm not an actor. Yeah. And, and it's very clear what I'm reading for you. You know, you're like, wow, thank you, Peggy. Is Merrick around? Um, <laughs> but, um, but Merrick does. He, you know, if I've got somebody and he's here, he'll come down. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't care. And he'll, you know, he'll work with friends that are going in. And, you know, he runs lines with people. And he has people that runs lines with him. If he's got a big part, you know, he auditioned for something that was a French speaking. Now, he f- speaks French. Wow. But not speaking French. <laughs> so <laughs> he had somebody that actually spoke French that worked with him. Oh, and he did nice. this amazing. Now, we wouldn't have been able to hire at last minute, hey, I have a self-tape that's due tomorrow. Mm-hmm nobody's gonna you know ch- you charge know, when, to you know i yeah. mean the amount that he would have to pay to get a last minute coach at that you know but i but used to spend so more, much money doing yeah. self tapes years ago and then i realized you know what i have helped so many people at, through the years and i have taped so many friends and now i'm like you know what i'm just gonna ask all the people yeah. i've helped with theirs yeah, hey. to come and help me with mine so now i have like exactly this makeshift and that's casting how it should office be. in my kitchen that's how it should be yeah that's it how it should, should be. be especially if you're one who's helped a lot of people you should yeah. be able to reach out and say hey i, I need a reader i need yeah. a person to come exactly in. yeah and, and that's and then we should do that for each other that's one of the things i wish to encourage more of in our industry is that you know if somebody has helped you out man when they ask for something back please help them back F- you know it's it's um we've got a lot of takers in our industry and i think that that's spreading um discouragement and mm-hmm. discontent because the givers uh get so depleted and let's just not deplete the givers let's like give something back that's that's something i'd love to say out into our industry in our world if you see an opportunity to help someone offer to help you know you know offer to help and not only that say hi to people yeah that's an art that's lost that's true and smile it's so easy and it's free it doesn't cost you anything to smile you know it doesn't cost you anything to be walking in public and seeing somebody that looks a little down and say that is such a pretty necklace and smile and keep walking that's That's free but you may change someone's life and you know you know you know how hard it is for you and you know you have a friend that's an actor all of a sudden text them and say just thinking about you and that's it yeah i love that you know and 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 when we start doing that helping Mm -hmm. each other and encouraging each other i really think you know that's going to i agree and you you write too i do and i know you told me before you, you kind of started writing when your mom died, and it was kind of your way to, to let things out. My, it was my only way to really um, process it. Yeah. It still hurts 27 years later uh, when I think about how young she died and how fast. And um, I didn't know how to process it. And even back then, I didn't really have... We didn't have a lot of guidance, you know. Um, our dad died not too long after our mom really he was diagnosed with cancer three months after she died from cancer and then you know he lasted a uh, six years after her but um we were young and um so yeah i i started writing and uh um my mom throughout her lifetime always said she wished she could give me her legs and if she could she would and i think three months after she died i found a doctor who said i think i can fix that so and she, I was like, thank you, Mom. Hmm. Aww. <laughs> Mom's up there pulling some strings. And, and then, you know, there was something she said when she was dying, and all of it made me think about a screenplay. And, I, and I, my first screenplay that I wrote was called I'll Be Dancing in Heaven. So that was inspired by my mom. And, uh, so, and through the years, I just started writing more and more because... I would think about all the characters that I wanted to play that I wasn't allowed to play. And, um, and then as I started writing, like the first opportunity I had to pitch something, I pitched it and they bought it and I sold the feature while I was going through one of my health challenges. So while I was going through cancer treatments, I wrote a screenplay, um, that was already sold. That's awesome. Yeah, and uh, w- they gave me a writing partner, and she came in, and we wrote it and delivered. And um, and ever since then, every time I think of a character I want to play, I start writing. And uh, every time I want to, I see something that I hate 
in our world. I start writing about it, and every time somebody really wrongs me, so warning <laughs> to all of you, they end up in a screenplay. <laughs> and uh, every time I have one of those really like horrible thoughts, it's like, I'm not going to act on this thought, but I will put it in a screenplay. That's um, funny. So, but you also yeah. get to kind of write in your friends and amazing I, talented I actually, people you work yeah. with. You kind of can, can you, yeah. gives you a little bit more control. That is one of the things that I love doing because I've spent um, 20 years now at the actor's studio watching some of the best actors I've ever seen, you know, work through their challenges and their craft on the stage. And, you know, a lot of them haven't had the breaks that yet that um, they would have mm-hmm. wanted and, I see their work and I and I I think of characters for them because I, I I write into these these people because I know what they're capable of and it and it makes for really rich characters and also my life experience sort of dictates that uh, my characters will be strong women <laughs> mostly and um, I don't, I honestly don't even know how to write a weak woman unless I'm making fun of them <laughs> because you know who I am is a is a strong woman because my life has given me no choice other than to be right. a strong woman if if I weren't a strong woman quite frankly I would be dead yeah like five times over by now and um, so I'm very strong so the way I see the world is different different than your average um, female and so my characters are very strong women and um, and there's a lot of humor in the in the dark stuff because I've had to have a lot of humor to survive my life. So uh, yeah, I love I love creating the world I want to see too. That's another reason why I write. I think that's yeah. awesome because you can you can create your you can create what you want. Yeah, it gives you a lot of power. And our industry does sort of inform the world whether we like it or not. We tell the world how to think and we tell the world what's acceptable and what what we should strive to be. And I would like um, the world to strive to be stronger and more evolved and um, more inclusive and Absolutely. you know more creative, more more able to adapt, adjust all the things that I always say about the disabled community is that they're so skilled at overcoming, um, adapting, adjusting. They are game changers. And so I like to write for them as well because I think that our world got so caught up in the, the surface stuff yeah, that doesn't that, matter. That women are, you know, 100 pounds and perfect skin and, and only no blemishes. Twi- only allowed and, to be 20 yeah, and flawless. All, all women are and 20. And it's like, come on. You know, all women like, are 20 and then they disappear. Yeah, they I think just, about the kind of women yeah. that I'd like to have by my side in battle. Yeah. And, and because life is a battle. And those are the women I write. And what's interesting is that when you've had the kind of life experience I've had and that it sounds like you've had, you know, you're, you become a strong spirit and that scares weak people. And I actually, it used to bother me that I scared people when I was young, but my mom said something so brilliant to me when I was a child and I've never forgotten it. She said, you know, what you have there is a great judge of character. Oh, I love that. Other people's character. So thank them for showing you who they are. So now when somebody's afraid of me, I'm like, good, let them be afraid. Let him, let him Get them out, 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 out of my way. way, out of the way. Because then all the strong people come my way. And if you looked at my friends, <laughs> if you looked at the women in my life, the ones who've been around for a long time, uh-huh. these are the strongest women you're ever going to know. These are immensely strong women like the kind of women we should be writing about in movies exactly and the kind of women that you know i'm not saying they won't cry but while they're crying they will get up and fix your world you know (laughs) while they are crying they will get their your kids to school you know i remember my mom on picture day when i was six years old you have seven siblings seven siblings so here's my mom I'm six years old, it's picture day, and I'm a kid in a wheelchair who's just learning how to, to walk. And I wanna go to school so bad, so I can stand for picture day. 
and my mom's car was broken down. She's pregnant out to here and she has two infants also, okay? So a toddler and an infant and pregnant and me paralyzed. And I am not kidding you that this woman got on a bike, put me in the basket, put one kid on her back. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm not kidding that this woman got me to school. You, you know, it's like, talk about a strong woman. She got me to school that day. Yeah. For my picture day. So I could stand there and show everyone that I could now stand. So, so this is the kind of depth that Hollywood is missing out on. Oh, hell yeah. These a story are the kind about of my mother's life. That would, <laughs> my mother's life would fascinate anyone. I mean, this woman, the things she got through. And she didn't come across as, I'm going to bust your balls. She was like the most feminine woman who let her husband, you know, be the king of his castle. But she was the rock. You know, she was the rock of our lives. And, you know, really when it, when it became the most evident was when she died. Yeah. Because when she was gone, everything fell apart. It's that, uh, that poem, I think it's a poem where they said, um, something about when, you know how they say the thing about when a tree falls in the forest, you know, like it shakes the whole world around it. It makes the animals scurry and you know, hide and, you know, and everything is shudder, shuddering. And, um, and they said in this poem, and I wish I could remember who wrote it. Sorry. Um, they said, it's the same thing when a great spirit dies and it did rock our worlds. When my mom went down, it rocked so many worlds. I have friends here. We are 26, 27 years later who still say, you know what your mom taught me. And one of my friends said, you know, your mother's home was the only home I ever felt welcome in in my whole life, including my own parents' home. Wow. And uh, my mom was, you know, we were Catholic, big family, Catholic schools, and um, when my mom died, the church was, like, overflowing. And, you know, we had, like, seven priests, I think, because they all wanted to do my mom's say, mass yeah. because she was always volunteering. Aww. She was always helping everyone on top of her eight children and, you yeah. know, a kid with a challenge. But, like... Th- th- when I think back on all the things my mom endured and pulled off, I'm like, those are some strong woman stories. Some strong It's woman the reason stories. I survived my life. Honestly. And I think I, I'm, I'm a big believer in, in, in communicating because yeah. see, when you, if, if I never talked to you, if I didn't take the time to have a conversation for you, then I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be touched by that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's the power that, that a good writer has. That's the power mm. that a good listener has is, you know, and, and yes, we get that from Hollywood, but we can also get that from Starbucks. <laughs> you know, people, people, people sit there on their phone. Yeah. And sometimes you need to look around and say, oh, let me yeah. get the door for you. Yeah. Oh, how are you today? Yeah. Oh, you know, and, you know, and, and, and. And Connect start with connecting people. with yeah, people yeah. in the industry, outside of the industry, and watch how, you know, because you don't know who you're connecting with. Yeah, you don't. You don't. You don't. And your game changer. You don't know exactly. You're shutting the door on. You're, you're, you're like yeah. <sighs> on your yeah. phone, and that yeah. was the person that wanted to cast you in their feature film and pay you millions of dollars. There's and that. he's like, oh, yeah, I remember that guy from Starbucks yesterday. Oh, yeah, that reminds me of a guy. <laughs> and now somebody's going to know who this is because he used to be, like, so well-known in Hollywood. And he used to go to Starbucks in his pajamas with his papers in a rolled-up paper bag. How and funny. he would... You know, go around. He would go to meetings like that, and he was one of the most powerful producers in our industry at that time. And you know, it just says, be careful. Be careful. You know, what, judging yeah. a book by the cover, a person by yeah. you know a, an exterior or a or a flaw or a limp or whatever you think isn't right. perfect. You know, because there is no person, <laughs> there is no human being who is perfect. Exactly. If you look perfect on the outside, you're probably broken on the inside (laughs) and uh you know so there is no perfect and and in life eventually unless you are one of the lucky ones who gets hit by a truck and dies instantly um you're gonna have a challenge you're gonna have a disability you're gonna lose your hearing or your eyesight or you're gonna have heart failure or you're gonna have a stroke or you're gonna have your knees go out of your ankles or something 
is going to make you join the community of people with challenges. So we might and, as well start And those start people, accepting. right, and, and the people that you, you harassed are the ones that are going to help you. That you're going to need, yes. That are going to teach you how to live now. Ta- that this, how to survive, how yeah. to beat cancer, how to yeah. overcome your life-threatening situation. Yeah. So you, don't, you never know there. what tomorrow is going to hold, yeah. so you really need to. Uh, you don't want to leave out your game changers, so you really need to be open to people. You know, Eileen, it was so fun to have a chat it was with you. So fun having a chat with you. Is there Thank anything you. that you want to tell? Any piece of advice or any any little brilliant um, thing that you want to say before we close this off? Uh, or did we say it all because we did talk a lot? Well, we did talk a lot. I want to say hashtag all in. Yes. I mean, it is time. It is so overdue that we become an all inclusive community and an all-inclusive entertainment industry and an all-inclusive world. So we're doing hashtag all in on everything because it's time for all human beings to be accepted for exactly who they are because we're all perfect. We're all perfect. Regardless of what our challenges and differences are, we're all exactly as we're meant to be. So that's the the thing I want to say. All in. All and right. thank you to you oh, well, for this you. day and for an easy, wonderful headshot session. And uh, I'm sure that you will post it. You, they should follow you so that they can see the final headshot. Oh, yeah, you headshots. can follow me on Twitter at Eileen Gruba, E-I-L-E-E-N-G-R-U-B-B-A. I'll have Same I'll have on Instagram. Yep. And uh, easy to find on all those things. Yeah, so follow her. Yeah. Talk to her. Be nice to her because... Be nice. We're all right about you in a screenplay. <laughs> we might be a screenplay. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. I hope You're that welcome. this was inspiring to someone. I hope that you enjoyed this vlog. Make sure you take a second. You're probably watching this on Facebook, but go over to YouTube, subscribe, click the little bell so you don't miss mm-hmm. any of my amazing videos. But most importantly, have an amazing week, and I'll see you next week. And go shoot with her because she's really good. She's easy to shoot with, so do it. And I didn't even pay her for that. She Thank did you. Not. <laughs> <laughs> yes, headshots Thank by you. Peggy. I would love to have you in. Thank you. Uh-huh. Thank yeah. you. It was great. Oh.